If I start losing pump and losing my muscle connection, the set at which that occurs is the one set too many. Warning! You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. Greetings Earthlings! Like, subscribe, and share this video. Share with a friend. Share with enemies. Share with people who think they know everything. Spread it like herpes. Speaking of herpes, I am a medical doctor and I could be your doctor. Click the link in the description box. I can order you blood work. I can read the blood work. I can treat any illnesses. I basically, it's like an HRT clinic that's a one-man army. Also, I do coaching. Dr. Karina Dotson and I have a coaching business called Apex Coaching. So if you sign up with me, you get coaching which is nutrition, programming, competition prep, or lifestyle coaching, as well as all the medical stuff. So you have two doctors in one business. It's going to be contest prep, the nutritionist, the programming person, and the doctor all in one. You can't beat it. It's integrated. It works the best that way. You'll love it. Make sure to do it. Click the link in the description box. My pre-back routine is pretty much the same as all my pre-routine. First, I'm going to release my hip flexor because driving in the car on the way here, it tends to uh, cause my hip flexor to get tight, which is going to cause lower back pain and plantar fasciitis eventually. So, per Dan Coffeen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this right up against my iliopsoas. Oh, it does not feel good. And I'm going to chill here for a bit. And we'll probably fast forward through this so that you don't get bored. But about a minute, two minutes of this, and that'll help me actually get ready to do my yoga. I do yoga before each training session to protect my tendons. Right now I lowered my estrogen. Right now it's like an eight, so I'm pretty dry. I drink about three gallons of water and have about 30 grams of salt a day to stay hydrated because I don't have estrogen on my side. I'm gonna brute force it, which means I pee a lot. <sighs> Taking deep breaths against this, letting it sink deeper and deeper into my ileus, I don't even know what the what you call that. Iliac fossa, maybe? I don't remember. It's been about 20 years since I've taken gross anatomy. <sighs> now I can turn to an angle, and as long as this doesn't slip out, it hits, it hits that so a little bit better. When it comes to back training in general, the name of the game is angles. With each breath, I can feel it stretching out a little bit better. Feel my hip flexor releasing a little bit more. That should be enough. Now, this is my weekend gym because it's 24 hours. It happens to have really good lighting, so that's why this worked out great. I'll do this side first. What I'm stretching right now is my glute maximus. on the side a little bit and get my glute medius. Now for those of you who are flexible this is pretty pathetic as far as yogis are concerned. I don't pretend to know how to do this the right way but this is where I feel the stretches. I'm feeling my glute medius at the origin all the way to the insertion. I'm also taking advantage of trying to work my rotation of my waist and keeping my transverse abdominalis tight so I can have better side shots. In theory, this elbow should be down, but I take what I can get. 
holding each pose for like 30 to 60 seconds. Although this isn't really a pose, it's a stretch. But, I'm, and then now I'm going to work the other glute, Maximus. The next loop me yes. Now I'm gonna work my lats a little bit. First I'm gonna work my quads. I mean at work, but stretch my quads. This doesn't look like a big stretch, but it is for me. I'm trying to do five to ten deep breaths. When I start feeling cramping is when I give up. I'm going to go on my toes a little bit and work my lat out. So I'm feeling my right lat right now. Go to the other side. Now I'm going to go to the all four position. I'm going to work my anterior and posterior tilt to my pelvis, then my lumbar spine, then my thoracic spine. Now I'm going to work all three at the same time. Next, I'm going to work my adductors, not work, but stretch my adductors, going back and forth, I'm trying to do a little bit of a P and F, where I'm trying to pinch the floor together and then relax, pinch the floor together and relax, and in theory this is supposed to reset my hips, I can lean a little bit to one side and really work the uh, left adductor origin. I know there's more than one adductor. There's adductor magnus, adductor brevis, I believe, gracilis. I don't really know those muscles that well. I should, but I don't. Never operated on the hips, really. There, that popped. That was good. So obviously we don't want our muscles to pop or our tendons to pop. We want our joints to pop a little bit and get used to the activity that they're going to be doing. So next. Stretch out my abs. I forgot my side poses, so I'm going to do those now. Right. So I'm going to drive my hips forward. This is as much rotation as I get. I'm, in theory, I should be able to rotate more than this, but I can't. This is not good, and it's not going to help me on stage. But...
This is hamstring. I'm not doing a lot of legs today because I'm doing back, but I wanted to go through it for completeness sake in case there's something that's really tight. I am doing rows, but it's a row machine. It's not like I'm doing bent rows, hip hinges, or something else that requires a lot of hamstring and glute. If I did, I'd be making this a lot more seriously, this part of the stretching. So, these are some mobility things that Dorian Yates does, and I've been doing for about 10 years. Something else that I do is I do two different types of Kegels, basically trying to cut off the flow of urine, do the 10 of those for 10 seconds each, try to clench my butthole, 10 of those for 10 seconds each, then I do both and a vacuum each for 10 seconds. So I'm going to just do all three of them at the same time. Now I'm full of food, so this is harder than in the morning. In the morning, you've got nothing in your abdomen, so it's easy. In the evening, you've got multiple meals in you and water, so it's kind of like lifting weights. You've got resistance, internal pressure. So those weren't 10 seconds, but that's the theory, is you should do 10 seconds worth. I'm still a little bit out of breath from all the other stuff I was doing. So it didn't look hard, but it's hard for me. And so everybody's different in that regard. I'm sure a lot of girls could rip through this pretty easy, but for me, it's really hard. Especially since I just started doing this for the first time in my life about six months ago. Antoine Vaillant said that Yoga is the fourth leg of the table. If you've got posing, nutrition, training, yoga is the fourth leg of the table of bodybuilding. And since I started doing that, it's completely changed everything for me. I can't believe I didn't start this 15 years ago. So even though that isn't real yoga, it's yoga enough for the purposes of what we do in here. And there's physical therapists like Dan Caffeine, who know better how to do this to get the best out of your posing. This is just some rudimentary shit. So feel free to dive in and
teach me some stuff. Leave some comments in the comment section about what you think I should be doing and what I'm doing wrong. This I have no ego about. I'm not going to be offended. So we did three of these so far. I'll probably do the rest of them in between sets of biceps. I don't want to make you wait any longer. Let's go get some biceps. On. All right, cool. When I do this, it's for my external rotation and rotator cuff. I find this is an easier way of doing it than using cables that you can match your resistance. And I can just pull my arm out to make it heavier or move it closer to make it lighter. And then I do the other side. And this may be a little sloppy, it's because I'm trying to rush through it because I'm being watched. It makes me nervous. So, middle delts, front delts. Pardon? Rear delts, middle delts. It's also getting my middle back right here, too. Oh, of course, yeah. That's that one. Now this one, it's a little different. First I do arm circles, otherwise my shoulder will click. I care if you might knock that over. The bicep tendon will slip in and out of its groove if it's not lubricated right. And then it fucks up everything. So, pushing it apart, and I'm protracting my scapula, retracting, depressing my scapula, protracting my scapula, doing internal rotation with the scapula. So, internal rotation, external rotation, internal rotation, external rotation. And I don't need to do that for biceps, but better safe than sorry. All right, now we're almost ready to get started. Oh. I'm gonna put my pre-workout in with my intro workout. Normally, I finish my pre-workout before we get started, but I didn't. So I'm gonna mix my pre and my intro. I'm not saying that's optimal, it's far from optimal. But it's better than just skipping the pre. And once you start hitting the weights, I want the intra involved in the process. All right. Now, this is 45 ounces of fluid. It's too much powder for 45 ounces of fluid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it. And then I'm going to pour it back in here. 50% of the way, and I'm going to load it up with more water. Mm -hmm. Boom, how's that for eyeballing? All right, I'm going to go put some more water in this. Make sure to pre-order your Fenris Fury. I think the pre-orders are going to be ready the first week of July to go out. So um, I think everything's all finished. It just needs to get delivered. And the intros are ready on the site, ValhallaLabs.com, for the Battle Meet intro. Oh. So before I get started, what I do is I open up my logbook. And I don't do shit from memory because this is too important to fuck it up. So since I'm in Milford Powerhouse, I go to the Milford Powerhouse back workout. And what did I do last time? I did one arm for 40 pounds, 20 reps on the right side. 19 reps and failed on the 20th on the left side on June 22nd and I was 200 pounds. I was 201 pounds today so I assume that I should have the same level of performance. Oh 
that's too much weight. Right. 20 pounds is very light, but that's okay. Because the goal is not to tear the muscle, the goal is to warm up. So I'm not curling with my wrist. I'm keeping my wrist fully extended. I'm trying to use just the bicep. And this is way too light. I don't feel shit, but oh, let's make it a little hot here. pump will start eventually. Once the pump gets started, that's when I'll start really taking things seriously. Now I'm starting to feel it. Feel a lot of long head. There again, some short head right there. There you go, that's what I want, short head. All right, other side. I've only done this workout one other time, and it was great. I tended, I, you know, first time you do a workout, you go really light, stop at 20 reps, and then today I'm gonna be pushing it, see how far I can go without getting, I wanna get at least 15 reps on everything because I really want to chase a pump today. Technically, I'm two weeks out from Atlanta Pro, but my glutes are not in, so I don't think I'm doing that show. I haven't re canceled the plane ticket yet, though, so I haven't given up on myself completely. <sighs> Starting to get a little baby pump. Baby pump. All right, so this was the work weight last time. We're going to do four reps, see how this feels. There you go. So you can't see it because it's a fixed bar, but if it was a dumbbell, you'd see I'm gonna be, I'm supinating as I do it. Getting a little bit more short head that way. And I can see it right now. And you could, might be able to see the fasciculations in there. Yeah, on the eccentric phase. So I have a feeling 50 is gonna be too heavy. So I'm gonna put a five on here. And by too heavy, what I mean is, I wanna get 19 reps, in theory, you know what I'm saying? I wanna be as close to 20 without hitting 20 as possible. Kinda of like, um, what's that called, blackjack, where you try to hit 21 and not go over 21. Imagine if blackjack was 19, that's how I'm gonna approach most of these sets today. <sighs> That feels good. Okay. I brought the fat grips, but I don't need them. This is fat enough. I think we're at six. Five. All right. 27, 28. When it hits 30 seconds, I'm going to do the other arm. I can stretch out this bicep, let more blood flow into it. So, feet, thumb, contact, rotate torso. That's the best way to stretch your bicep out between the sides. This gets more chest. 
this really gets chest. This, if you bend on the elbow, it's going to get supraspinatus. This is going to get chest again. But this gets bicep. Starting to get a pump. All right, we went over by 18 seconds, but that's okay. was 20 on that side. Now you probably notice the tempo is a lot slower than most people lift. So you don't have to lift like that, but I have to lift like that to have my mind muscle connection and pump. Once I'm feeling it really good, I can speed it up. I'm not going to lose my muscle connection at that point. So you go as slow as you have to to get the mind muscle connection you're looking for. So this is good. We're getting somewhere. So now I'm going to document this. All right, so I'm going to open up my app. I'm going to go in here. I did 45 pounds. I did 19 left, 20 right. And I'm going to make a note under the subjective. I had a 5 out of 5 for pump and a 5 out of 5 for my muscle connection last time. Right now I'm already a 4 out of 5 pump and already a 5 out of 5 my muscle connection. So I estimate that this will get better as the set goes on. If I start losing pump and losing my muscle connection, the set at which that occurs is the one set too many. You should have escalating pump, escalating my muscle connection as you go through that body part. If it starts to taper off, you've overdone it. You've overcooked that goose. Alright, cool. It's time to go again. We'll go with 14F because that last attempt was not even a partial rep, it was just bullshit. So we're gonna put 14F. Alright, 14 failure. And that's on the left side. Alright. Last time I got 14 point plus one on the right and 15 on the left. But I was using 40 pounds, not 45 pounds. So this, we're doing great. So it's interesting to mix frost giant blood with cinnamon apple pie, but it works. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to have fruity names for the flavors because I'm not that kind of guy. So the Fenris, the new and improved Fenris is going to be Frost Giant Blood flavor. And the new Thor's Hammer is going to be Victory flavor. 
All right. Because who doesn't like the taste of victory? So my grading scale is five out of five is painful. So if I have a painful pump, like between sets, like you can't get away from your arm. Like right now, my this right arm hurts so bad that I have to prop it up. I can't just leave it at my side. Then that's gonna be a five out of five. So we're gonna change this from a four out of five to a five out of five. And I got, I believe 15 reps and failed on the 15th one. Maybe I had a partial rep left. You know what? That's a good point. It really was, it slowed down dramatically. The velocity on the concentric phase slowed down. So we know it was at least an RAR of one. It may not have been an RAR of zero. It's silly to approximate that. You don't know you failed until you failed. And by failure, I mean momentary failure, not voluntary failure. All right, so last set. That was slow velocity, and I didn't get the full rep. So I'm gonna count that as a 12 plus one. So we know it's a failure, because we failed. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how else to say it. Left, all right. All right, we got one half of a set left, and then on to something I want to experiment with. This gym, has a lot of great equipment. It has an arm blaster. It's got cables. And I brought my um, CAS grips. So what I'm gonna try to do is the facing away cable curl, but with the arm blaster to really isolate. The closest thing you can come to that is a cable preacher curl, but usually the cable goes away from you. It doesn't go under you, so it kind of defeats the purpose of that type of attempt. So you're gonna see history in the making today. That's 13 plus one. They weren't great, but they weren't bad. A oh. oh. little bit of clicking in the both bicep tendon. That's okay. All right. 13 plus one, right. And we have completed that exercise. Now we're gonna do the arm blaster. Okay. I'm gonna go get those cast handles. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the Director of Human Performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. Uh, we'll be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy 
as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. This needs to be three holes from the end. Let's try that. It's neat Jeff gets all these cool toys. That's going to be a little low. Okay. Right, that's why I want to do this. It's flattering. Now watch the baby weight. Watch this. Watch the baby weight. <laughs> this is so isolating that this is going to be a plenty. They're going to be like, this is why your muscles are small because you don't lift a lot of weight. It's like... The lighting's still good? This was digging in my elbow like a motherfucker. Let's go. Yeah, let's go higher. You don't know till you try. That should be better. That gives me a little bit more control. There you go. Should go a little heavier.
had to catch my breath after that one. Going a little too fast. For my lungs, that is. The arms are catching up. Like, if you go too slow, you don't get a pump. If you go too fast, you can't breathe. Okay, one more set, then we got back. They're back simple. It's six sets of that, six sets of that. Three grips, two sets, four, two machines, three times two times two, 12. We started biceps at 9.29, it's now 9.49, we're almost done, 6 sets, 20 minutes, 2 sides, that's really like more like 12 sets, 20 minutes, that ain't bad. Now it's a men's room break, and then it's on the back. So this is just the activation for the lats. Now normally, there you go. Normally I would do the underhand grip, but that got stale on me. So I'm gonna skip that for a couple weeks. Uh oh. 
Steel is in the SFR ratio is upside down. So I prioritize the things that have high stimulus and low fatigue. So as you do something over and over and over again, the stimulus becomes less pronounced and the fatigue becomes more pronounced. So what used to give you a pump and didn't give you sore joints, now just gives you sore joints, no pump. So once you start running into that where you're not getting a pump, you're not getting sore after that workout, you just get sore joints, time to deprioritize that, move it to the back of the roster, move something else into position. Kind of like a quarterbacks or pitchers. So you don't end up like grinding away at the same exact area. Right. Well, some, some of these I left in for over a year. Okay. And I didn't figure out that that was all it was. Is everything was stale on that body part. Yeah. So by switching gyms, for instance, back day, I mean leg day, same fucking routine. It's leg curl, adductor, leg extension, squat variation. But since it's all different equipment, it feels completely different. Yeah, just because it's a minor difference. Yeah, it's just an engineering of the machine. All right. So, last time I fucked around with a mad grip underhand first, and I did a close grip before I got to the neutral grip. So I was at negative 80, and I only got 10. This time I got, I think like 20 with negative 70. Now I felt it on the outer lower lats with the mad grip under, I get more of the inner lower lats and the rhomboids. I have a feeling when I go to the lat grip, I'm gonna feel more upper and outer lat. And when I go to the wide grip, I'm gonna get more rear delt, Terry's major, upper lat. Very little lower lat. Then when we go to the next machine, it's rows, we're gonna get lower lat, then we're gonna get rhomboid, then we're gonna get upper and middle trap and rear delt with the third grip. That should uh, take out everything. I didn't hit lower back because the lower back will be hit on the normal pull variations that I do at the West Bloomfield Powerhouse. This one is gonna be random because it's only with Saturday and Sunday that I come to this gym. And since this machine's so great and that machine's so great, I want to take advantage of these machines because you can have a seated cable row anywhere.
think that was 13. So as you can see, I take longer rest periods after back than I do biceps. It's a much bigger body part. Oh, yeah. I think that was only like nine. Like, did you guys get a count on that? You ready? Oh, that feels good. So, what I'm gonna do now is prepare my scapula for rowing. I'm gonna lean back. And then this, I'm gonna do like a face pull. And now my back should be ready to go. All right. I don't know if I broke down my settings last time. Let me see. Nope. It's 115. I got 15. I think I was at five and five. Alright, cool. So now it works up. I got 15 last time. Let's see how many I can get this time.
It hit so low. That was so good. That hit so low. Really, that is a really hard body part to hit. Did you get it in an angle so you could see beneath the shirt? Okay, cool. Because I figure from the oblique angle, when I arch my back like that, you can see behind the shirt, right? See, like, yeah. <sighs> that is rough because the pressure on your chest, you can't breathe for shit. Right, it's exhausting. I almost asked you for help, Charlie. <sighs> it is, yeah. I, I switched to Death Grips recently. I like these guys. Why don't we do a commercial for them? <laughs> so, I had made fun of people with Versa Grips for years. I've been a big advent fan of canvas straps, not nylon straps, but canvas straps. I was at the Arnold and they had these death grips and it's, it fits my motif. I should give it a shot. Jim Reaper and death grips. And um, I mean, what's more metal than lifting my iron, right? So I love these things. The big important thing is you put them on the right wrists. It doesn't look like it, but this is comfortable. If it wraps the other way, it's a bitch. So you gotta make sure that it lines up right with your hand. So it would be basically these three fingers, not these three fingers. That's the most important thing about using death grips. Also, you want it on the wrist, not where you think your wrist is, but where the actual wrist is. So where people think their wrist is, is actually the radius, the distal tip of their radius and ulna. Your actual wrist is where your 10 metacarpals are, which is really, it looks like it's part of your hand. So if you see my finger, you think my finger's covering my wrist. It's not, this is my wrist. This is the distal part of my radius and ulna. So when I ride it, it's all the way up on the wrist, not cutting off circulation of the hand, which will also cut off the median nerve and you won't be able to squeeze. All right, enough with the anatomy shit, Todd. Get with the lifting. All right. Okay. Thirteen plus one. All right, so with this underhand Dorian Yates row, we're gonna get here. Now that we're gonna go the wider row, we're gonna get right here. And when we do the upper row, we're gonna get up all here. Now, there's plenty of right and wrong ways to do these things. In theory, you could but that's where I'm targeting. So you might see my body's moving around and shit. It's only my second time using this piece of equipment. So I don't have it perfected yet how to hit it just right. But ultimately I'm gonna be pitching forward, anterior pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt, pushing my head back, doing all types of shit to try to figure out how to hit exactly what I'm trying to hit. And that might change throughout the range of motion. So this, with my head back might hit my rhomboids better, but this might hit my lower lats better. So the way that I row to hit the lower lats might be this, but the way that I row to hit my rhomboids 
might be this. And the way to get my upper traps might be this. So it might look like there's three completely different exercises. And that's because that's what they are. Do you need a second to line up and everything? Yeah. All right. <laughs> So as you can see, I made like seven adjustments. I found that if I put my feet wider, externally rotated the hips, squeezed my glutes, kept my head back, kept my fingers a little higher, fired my index finger and my pinky, I was able to hit my middle back better than what I was doing on the first. Every rep, I made one adjustment. Kind of like at the uh, optometrist, where he's like A, B, A, B, 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 C, B, C, B. That's how I dialed in how to hit that specific part of my back the way I want to. And it's different for everybody. It could even be different for you on the day of the week, depending on how tight you are in a certain place. For example, I did what was intuitive, but I felt a fiber in my right middle, right rear delt, spasm and I was like that might be perfect but if I do this I could tear that delt so let's regress to something that's a little bit safer and by the time I wrap back around to retest it it had enough blood flow and oxygen that it relaxed and was able to contract again One grip left.
felt a little bit of redox on that. I felt a lot in my wrist. Huh? Why in your wrist? This thing. I went too close. So I'm pulling up like this. I should have went wider. You know what? This is hurting my wrist too much. I'm just gonna take these off. This is no longer helpful. I can make it through one set without these. You ready? All right, back's done. So that's three sets. I normally do four sets, but I feel like I'm losing my pump, not getting a pump. So I'm gonna abort from this because I don't need to dig myself in a hole I can't climb out of. I don't normally do these and I'm getting, I get a really good stimulus to fatigue ratio out of these. So three sets of these might be equivalent to five sets of those because I've been doing those for a year and a half without break. And a lot of people are like, why aren't you doing two arms at a time? 
if I'm doing two arms at a time, even if I had perfect ambidexterity, there's still going to be some lean back or lean forward. With this, I can brace and I can line my sternum up with my index finger and I don't have to worry about coming across my body and losing my rear delt. So I can come right here, boom. Now I can come as an arc and get more rear delt that way. I can wrap my thumb under and come out here, which theoretically should get more rear delt, but I feel a lot of internal stuff like pec minor getting engaged. So I'm just gonna do the arc. And I can't do that with a pec deck. What I can do is lean into a pec deck and get the arc. But then I'm getting a lot of glutes, lower back, and calf stability issues. Plus, because I'm short, I end up cutting myself off at the throat with the seat. So this just works better, especially if it's at the end when I need to catch my breath anyway. All right, so we're on to posing. So we're done with the workout part of the workout.